shots. Yo, what is up everyone? Tay here. Okay, so a few videos back, we did this whole video where we talked about the Earth-based political films that we will see in Phase 4 and Phase 5, and how that could be setting up the Thunderbolt, and just the overall restriction of heroes by the government and the UN due to the Sokovia Accords, and all of that. And in that video, I said we would then talk about how this could apply into specific shows or movies in a separate video. So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to talk about Falcon and the Winter Soldier, as well as the new Captain America replacement, John Walker. We are also going to talk about She-Hulk and the return of Bruce Banner, as well as the return of past villains that we haven't seen since Phase 1. And, of course, the Thunderbolts and some new little bits of information, some new set photos we got from Set Falcon and the Winter Soldier, all of that. But first, of course, before we get into everything, subscribe, like, all of that, um, you should click the bell so you are actually notified when new videos come out. And if you would like to check out past videos, you can find those linked in the description down below. And then also check out the recent Loki video where we talk about Loki and the Time Stone, as well as who the villains of the Loki series could be and how that could tie into Thor Love and Thunder. Anyways, enough with all that, let's get into it. The Sokovia Accords. They'll operate under the supervision of a United Nations panel only when and if that panel deems it necessary. All right, before we talk about the new cap, one quick caveat on the Thunderbolt. Okay, so just the other day, if you, you know, like two weeks ago or something like that, MCU Cosmic posted a scoop on his website that said that Marvel Studios are in early stages of development on a Thunderbolts movie. But this then caused a lot of sites to go on and say, oh, the Thunderbolts have been confirmed, Marvel Studios, Thunderbolts confirmed, all of that. But that is not actually the case. It is not confirmed. If you watch the channel, you know that I do think Marvel Studios are setting up the Thunderbolts and that the Thunderbolts will be coming as a part of Phase 5, most likely. So it's probably true that Marvel Studios are in early stages of development on the Thunderbolts. But I just had to throw it out there that it's not confirmed for anybody that might have read that and is wondering why in this video I am talking about the Thunderbolts in hypothetical terms and not factual terms. Now, like I said, it seems like Marvel Studios have been setting up the Thunderbolts going back as far as Phase 1, with movies like The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Winter Soldier, Civil War, Homecoming, Black Panther, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Far From Home, among others, all being films that seem to be leading in that direction in one way or another. Especially Civil War, as that's the movie that introduced the Sokovia Accords when the UN really started to crack down on the Avengers and vigilante heroes and super-powered characters in general. And now that Tony and Cap are gone and the Avengers are no longer a thing, at least for the time being, it looks like Falcon and the Winter Soldier will be the show that really starts to explore the government's first steps at creating their own heroes program. And if you saw the recent Expanding the Universe featurette that Marvel Studios put out, in that we actually saw the first official concept art of John Walker, aka the US agent, who will basically be like the government's replacement for Captain America. And just the other day, some Falcon and the Winter Soldier set photos came out that show the US agent symbol on a platform of sorts in the middle of this football field. And when I see this, this makes me think that this could be how the government decides to introduce John Walker to the world. Which would definitely make sense because as we clearly saw in Spider-Man Far From Home, the world is looking for new heroes to look after them, especially now that Tony and Cap are gone. So for the government to introduce John Walker to the world, and you know, this could either be maybe some kind of interview that's taking place on a football field, or it could also be like a big halftime spectacle where at halftime John Walker comes out onto the field or something like that. And where I saw these photos was on Charles Murphy's website and on there he pointed out another detail from these photos which is this woman in this big coat who looks to be connected to some kind of stunt harness. And you can see that she is also sporting a mohawk that's like two shades of pink. And this mohawk looks quite similar to the Marvel character Melissa Gold, a.k.a. Songbird. 
And for now, this is totally observational speculation due to the Mohawk similarities and the stunt harness and all of that. Oftentimes you will see actors wearing these big coats so they can cover up their suit. But I thought I would just mention this because Songbird wouldn't be a stretch to appear in Falcon and the Winter Soldier because for one, in the comics, she is closely connected to Baron Zemo and was also a member of one of the versions of the Thunderbolts during the 50 State Initiative. So yeah, and if you'd like to check out more on that, like I said, I saw these over at uh, murphysmultiverse.com, which I think is a news site. I like Charles Murphy's stuff, and it's hard to find good MCU news sites, so check that out if you would like to see more on that. Anyways, so as far as Sam and Bucky is concerned, and what their role will be in Falcon and Winter Soldier when the show starts... It's not yet clear if they will also be working for the government or if they will just be trying to live normal non-hero lives or they could also be working as vigilante heroes. But what I think is likely to happen is we know that Zemo will be returning to be either the main villain or one of the villains of the show. So what we could see is at one point during the show, Sam and Bucky might have to team up with John Walker to help track down and capture Zemo. And if we judge on what happened in the Sam Wilson Captain America comics, then it's also likely that at some point, John Walker will turn on Falcon and Bucky, and they will end up having to battle him as well. Anyways, let's move on for now, but I am going to come back to John Walker and how he could fit into this larger picture of the Earth-based political MCU towards the end of the video. But for now, let's move on and talk about Hulk, She-Hulk, and the return of Hulk villains. Almost everything that the military does in the Marvel Universe is an attempt to recreate the super soldier. We've already seen in The Incredible Hulk, Bruce Banner, Emil Blonsky turning into the Hulk, turning into the abomination. Those were all attempts at replicating what Steve Rogers was. It worked with Steve, it hasn't worked since then. Is that because they didn't get the formula right? All right, so in this section, let's talk about Hulk, She-Hulk, and Red Hulk, possibly. Okay, so as far as She-Hulk goes, we don't yet have a release date, but we do know that at D23, it was announced to be officially a part of Phase 4. So in all likelihood, it seems like Spring 2022 would be the latest it would come out. We also don't have any information on the cast of the show, but in the comics, She-Hulk was Jennifer Walters, who was a lawyer and was also Bruce Banner's cousin. And after she is involved with a case with ties to organized crime, she nearly loses her life, and Bruce is forced to give her a blood transfusion of his blood in a last-ditch effort to save her life. Which, this did work, it did save her life, but it also resulted in Bruce being blamed for her attack. Now, we don't know how or if Bruce Banner will fit into this show just yet, but Mark Ruffalo did say in a recent interview that he is meeting with Kevin Feige soon to discuss Hulk's future in the MCU. And he also said that he would not rule out appearing in the She-Hulk show. And what Mark Ruffalo also said in that interview, it sounds like he definitely wants to come back and return as Hulk. Now, as far as how all of this could tie into the Thunderbolts, the general concept around how the Thunderbolts could exist in the MCU is that General Ross, aka Thunderbolt Ross, is the one that will put all of this into motion, replacing the Avengers Initiative with the Thunderbolts Initiative. And then the role that Nick Fury had over the Avengers would basically be the same role that General Ross would have over the Thunderbolts. And we know that ever since General Ross was introduced into the MCU, he's wanted two things. To capture Bruce for what he did to his daughter Betty, and also to capture Bruce so he could study him and figure out how to make his own super soldiers. There's also been a lot of speculation that She-Hulk could finally lead to General Ross transforming into the Red Hulk. But I don't want better anyway. God damn it, I want! What's inside of him? All right. So what I've always thought would make a great plot for an MCU Thunderbolts movie is General Ross using the Thunderbolts to go after Hulk and finally capture him. But at this point in the MCU, Hulk is now smart. He's basically just a banner in Hulk's body. So the public's no longer scared of him and they treat him more as a hero celebrity. 
But if this was ever to reverse, like say the Hulk persona was ever to come back with a vengeance, perhaps in a World Breaker Hulk scenario, you know General Ross and the government would jump at the chance to finally capture Hulk and get him off the streets once and for all. Now, like I said, General Ross has a grudge against Bruce Banner for what he did to his daughter, Betty. But more than anything, Ross wants to get Hulk so he can study him and replicate the results. And back in the original Incredible Hulk movie in 2008, it seemed like the only way to do that was for Ross to capture Hulk. But now, all these years later, it seems like there would probably be several ways he could do that. For instance, in the cafe scene in Avengers Endgame, Hulk mentions that he spent 18 months studying in the Gamma Lab. For years I've been treating the Hulk like he's some kind of disease. But then I start looking at him as the cure. 18 months in the Gamma Lab. I put the brains and the brawn together. So that line of dialogue right there could possibly be setting up the introduction of She-Hulk or possibly Red Hulk. Or maybe it could really just be as simple as Bruce Banner's blood like it was in the comics, because we also saw the effects that his blood had on Samuel Stearns and Emil Blonsky in the original Incredible Hulk movie. Just a few drops of blood on Stearns' forehead started his transformation into the villain The Leader, and it was also Bruce's blood that was responsible for the full transformation of Emil Blonsky into the Abomination. Now, Kevin Feige has said on multiple occasions in both past interviews and fan Q&As that Marvel Studios have had regular discussions about bringing back villains such as Ghost, Abomination, Justin Hammer, The Leader, etc. And a lot of the Thunderbolts rumors that we have heard in the last year kind of swirling around have come from the Wardell leaks, which so far have been pretty much all correct. I would say 95% correct. And what those leaks said in regards to this is that Marvel Studios do have plans to introduce the Thunderbolts and that characters such as General Ross, Zemo, Ghost, Justin Hammer, and Abomination would all be returning to be a part of the team and that the villain of the movie would be the leader. So let's talk a little bit about how that could happen and where some of these characters have been. Okay, so the last time we saw Samuel Stearns was in the Incredible Hulk movie in his transformation scene that was clearly setting up a future return as the leader. And that's the last time we saw him in the movies. But we actually did see where this scene left off in the MCU prelude comics for the first Avengers movie. Now the way these prelude comics are treated is sort of as loose canon. Anyways. So where that scene in The Incredible Hulk left off in the prelude comics was that Nick Fury had sent Black Widow to Harlem to observe the situation between Hulk and Abomination. And while Hulk and Abomination were fighting in the streets, Black Widow found Stearns in an alleyway and took him into S.H.I.E.L.D. custody. And from there, S.H.I.E.L.D. started the research program Project Mr. Blue so they could study Stern's mind and the effects that Bruce Banner's blood had on his physiology. But then, of course, a few years later in Captain America the Winter Soldier, S.H.I.E.L.D. fell due to being infiltrated by Hydra. So what would have happened to Stern's after that? Well, after S.H.I.E.L.D. fell in Winter Soldier, all of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s property was taken into custody by the government. So the most likely place for Stearns to end up after this would probably be in General Ross's raft ocean facility for superpowered people and vigilantes. Yeah, but not some supermax floating ocean pokey. You know, this place for maniacs. This is a place for criminals, don't he? The raft is also probably where the Abomination would have ultimately ended up. Because after Hulk defeated the Abomination in Harlem, the little we know about what happened to him next came from the Marvel one-shot, The Consultant. And what we learned in that was, after Hulk defeated the Abomination in Harlem, he was taken into custody by General Ross and the military and transferred to the Vault facility in Alaska, where he was then put into cryosleep. But again, that was back before the raft even existed. So now that the raft is complete, it would make sense for Abomination to be transferred there. So if he ever escaped, he's miles beneath the ocean. And it would totally make sense for Abomination to be recruited into the Thunderbolts once they come into existence. 
And something else we learned in the consultant one shot is that when Nick Fury first proposed the idea of the Avengers initiative back in phase one to the World Security Council, they wanted the Abomination to be a member of the Avengers instead of Bruce Banner. And this would have happened except for the fact that Nick Fury and Phil Coulson knew this was a horrible idea, so they ended up sabotaging these plans. Another fun fact is that Tim Roth, who played Abomination, said in an interview a few years ago that the Abomination almost appeared in Avengers Age of Ultron, which if that would have happened, Tim Roth said he would have returned to reprise his role. And one more fun fact about the Raft facility and John Walker. So for a time in the comics, John Walker was actually the warden of the Raft facility. And this tied into the Thunderbolts, where under John Walker's permission, deals were brokered with certain villains that were held captive in the Raft, where they would be released on a probationary period if they agreed to join the Thunderbolts roster. And I just bring that up because I think that concept could be applied very well into the MCU, but with General Ross being the one who makes the deals with the villainous inmates to start forming his Thunderbolts team. So yeah. Anyways, enough with all that, let's call the video there. I know this video didn't have like a big grand conclusion or big grand theory, but it was just a, a bunch of little mini theories and mini speculations with stuff from the comics and all that. Anyways, please like and subscribe if you would like to share the video. That is greatly appreciated and really helps the channel. And once again, you can check out any past or recent MCU videos linked in the description down below. Like I said, there's the Loki video, the Phase 5 Thunderbolts video. Check out the Doom Secret Wars video and how Secret Wars could happen in Phase 6 and all of that. All right, I'm probably forgetting something, but that's okay. We will talk about it next time. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and I will be back soon.